Alright guys, welcome to another Gradle tutorial. Um, in this tutorial we want to depend on a jar file, basically some kind of dependency um, that we are going to add to the Gradle build script. So Gradle is going to automatically download the version that we want from a Maven or an Ivy or whatever server. In this, uh, this tutorial we are just going to use a Maven server. Um, Maven repository actually. And um, then we can use it in our code. So at first let's go ahead and actually edit our only class that we have to actually depend on something. I'm just going to import uh, org.apache or apache whatever you pronounce it dot commons dot length three dot string utils and use string utils dot swap case right here. So yeah, that's really not complicated and I don't think a swap case method needs any explanation. So I'll just save this and go back to the build script. So now what uh, would happen if we wanted to build this project? Um, it would say, well, build failed because um, string utils right here and right here where it's being imported um, does not exist. Well, yep, it does exist, but we didn't really like download it and it doesn't exist in a project. Um, now what we have to do is we have to declare this dependency in the build script. At first, let's say, where are we going to get that dependency from? And um, like I said, in this tutorial, we are going to grab it from the Maven central repository. So we first have to tell the build script there, that there actually is this repository and that we want to use it. So in the repositories closure, we can add any kind of repository we want. Uh, Gradle by default supports Maven and Ivy, but yeah, I'm repeating myself, we are going to use Maven. Um, the usual way to declare Maven repositories is to give this another closure and say URL, my awesome URL, um, but Gradle already has <coughs> a Maven central method built in, which actually does the exact same thing. You just don't have to type out the URL every time. And um, there's also Maven local, which adds the local Maven cache. Probably um, in your in your business or wherever I don't know, um, you publish your own artifacts to your own uh, to the local Maven cache on your own server or something. Um, and then this is going to come in handy, but um, Gradle already has its own caching method, actually. So we, we don't really need that um, for this right now. So let's just not do it. Um, yeah, but that's not enough. We, we could try it again, but it's still going to fail, even though we said there's that repository and um, yeah. We just didn't tell Gradle that the dependency that we want is in that is in that repository yet. So let's do that using the dependencies closure. I hope I didn't make a spelling mistake there. Um, in the dependencies closure, actually, what we do um, it, it does look pretty simple, like compile org apache that comments comments lang 332. It does look pretty simple, but um, there's a lot that we can understand and misunderstand right here. At first, what did I write down here? This is the, uh, as you can see here, a uh, nope, as you can see here, um, this is the website of the comments lang library from Apache, or Apache, <laughs> whatever. And this is the group ID, artifact ID, and version. In Gradle, these are called, like you can see here, group, name, and version. So basically the same stuff, um, but yeah, you have to know about it and you have to put the right uh, stuff in your build script, which I hopefully did. Yep, I did. So this is a short way to write it, but you can also write it like this. You probably just saw it. Uh, group org.apache or apache comments uh, name comments lang and yeah I don't have to write that all down now uh, version blah. okay um, but what does this actually do so the dependencies closure um, 
puts the declared dependencies right here that it gets from the repositories right here um, into the configuration that we write down right here. So compile sounds like some kind of method, some kind of command, um, like please compile this dependency. That's what I first understood it when I learned Gradle. But actually compile is a configuration. Um, and a configuration is basically just a set of files. So let's just have a look at which configurations there are using the Gradle dependencies uh, command or task or whatever you want to call it. So right now we have the archives, compile, this is the one we're using, default, runtime, test compile, and test runtime um, configurations. And um, they are all added by the Java plugin, except default, I think. Um, and we can see what they do because the Java plugin authors was nice and put a nice little description right here. So compile is the compile class path for source set main. No dependencies added yet. That's what we're doing right now. Um, so there we go. Source set main is this right here, the source main folder where we put all our sources. And it's the compile class path for that source set. So basically um, the class path that we want to use when we actually compile the sources in this source set right here. So that's exactly what we need. <laughs> um, now we put this uh, dependency right here into the compile configuration. And we could actually add our own configurations, but at first let's just finish this and, you know, um, have a look at the more, uh, at the other stuff later. So now let's say Gradle build and see if it works. And yep, resolving dependencies compile right here. This means it's downloading it from the, uh, yep, from the repositories. So it's looking in all these repositories. Right now it's just the Maven Central repository and downloading it. And, and now we say that if, now we see it failed probably because I made a spelling mistake or something. Um, build failed. What went wrong? Could not resolve. Yep. So I made some kind of spelling mistake org dot apache dot commons commons lang three three two I don't know what's wrong there uh yep commons lang three I forgot the three right there so this is actually the name or the group ID or whatever you want to call it um of this dependency so now let's save this and build again and now it's going to be able to find the dependency on the Maven Central repository and everything worked. Okay, so now in our Java archive in the build libs directory, we would find that dependency, right? You would guess that. Well, nope, we don't. So actually if we try to um, execute that now, like java minus jar build libs rail tutorial jar and give it some, uh, I don't know, hello world we are going to get an exception because the um, org apache commons lang3 string utils class is not found. Um, in case you don't remember, that's the class that we used right here on our main class, string utils. So that's what we wanted to use. And now Gradle is telling us, uh, not Gradle is telling us, Java is telling us that has not been found. Well, how how is that even possible? Because we, we declared it right here and Gradle said it all built fine. Um, well, that's um, the compile class path. So when Gradle compiles these source sets here, or the, these sources, um, then it's going to put that on a class path. But when we pack it into the jar, then not. <laughs> then just our sources are going in. So now we have to change that. Um, because that, that actually makes sense. So you, just so you understand why this is the, the, the um, normal behavior. Um, we probably don't want to put all dependencies in the jar. I mean, that's great if we want a runnable, a runnable jar that we can just execute and it runs, but probably we are developing a library and then we don't want this apache.commons um, dependency in the jar. So we can put it into another project where that dependency probably is already in there. So we just have it once and everything's fine. And, you know, I guess you know what I mean. I hope you know what I mean. Um, but right now, for this use case, we want to actually put it in the jar because it's not there otherwise. Um, for this, we are going to configure the jar task using the jar uh, closure right here. And actually, the jar task would look something like this. I mean, it's it's being added by the Java plugin, but it would look something like this. T 
task jar. Um, we didn't talk about tasks yet and how to declare them, but just so you get an idea, type jar. And actually, the type jar extends the type zip, and zip basically just packs a zip archive and has the method from. So we can just write from right in here and give this a single file or a file collection, a file tree, a bunch of file stuff. Um, now we have to, now, now what, remember what I said, um, we can give this a file collection and compile is actually a file set or a file collection or, you know, it's just a bunch of files and this wants a bunch of files. So we would like to give this, this compile configuration in some sort. So we're going to say configurations, which is a property of the project and then dot compile and well, we can't just put the whole configuration right in there. Because actually, remember what we did in the dependencies closure. We added this artifact that we are downloading, which is a jar, to the compiled configuration. So if we did this, it would simply add the, the, the actual jar into this jar we have right here. So we would see another jar here and not the folder with the class files in, which is what we want to be able to execute it. Um, so instead, we have to use some... Um, other stuff. So um, from the compile correct, from the compile file collection, we are now going to use um, some groovy groovy method called collect. And yeah, I'm repeating myself. Compile is a file collection, and a file collection extends or implements or whatever the groovy collection class or interface. I'm not really that groovy expert, but we can give this a closure and do stuff in here. So at first, what does this collect method do? It sounds like what it sounded like to me, um, it would add stuff to the collection, but actually that's not really right. It doesn't really add stuff, it does transform stuff, so it replaces stuff actually. Um, collect goes through all of the entries in the collection and transforms that entry into whatever we specify here. So we could say entry, just to give um, the entry some kind of name, and now zip tree entry. And zip tree is another method, so we could also write it like this, but we're going to write it like this because it looks way better. And actually, we can let all this stuff here away and just say zip tree it because it is like this another variable, but um, inside closures we use it. So this is the final thing. Let's just save this, give you a little bit of time to think about it, build, have a look at the jar, and there we go. Org, Apache, Commons, Lang3, and all that stuff in the library that uh, the that we added, the dependency but as class files. So basically it's extracted it from the jar file that we downloaded and put it in the jar file that our final jar file is that we want to generate. Um, but how does this stuff here actually work? So let's, let's, let's have a look at this slowly again. From the configurations, we assess the compile configuration, which is a file collection and file collections or collections in general in Groovy have a collect method that transforms each entry into something else. It is a variable for that entry, simply a default name in closures. And zip tree is a method by Gradle projects that um, takes a zip slash a jar, a jar is a zip in case you didn't know, and um, creates a file tree of all the entries in the zip. <laughs> I hope this um, made it kind of clear. So we could actually say file tree in here and give it a directory like uh, actually this is what probably better uh, some directory. So like this we would put all files into the some directory into that jar that we're trying to pack. But instead we want to extract them from the zip archive that is the dependency 
slash the jar slash the jar archive so we use zip tree and say it to transform to replace the jar that we got that we put in the compile configuration right here with its contents that are then going to go into the jar file okay i hope i didn't confuse you and everything i hope that was clear um, now let's just execute it to see it actually works and that I'm not fooling you. So java minus jar build libs um, come on uh, just just tab and it's going to work. So now test some arguments hello world and gradle and everything Whoop! and it's working. Now as you can see um, the arrays are two string created this and the hello uh, the string utils dot swap case swapped every case so hello and hello has been swapped in the case all right I guess you know what I mean I'm talking in a weird way today again um, okay so now just one more thing to make you understand this configurations stuff a little bit more um, the Java plugin already added all these configurations right here which by the way now all contain this uh, dependency that we put into compile because actually they can also extend from one another and test runtime test compile and stuff um, depends on compile or the other way around so we added it to all of these at the same time but um, we can also add our own configurations like for example configurations my config or something. Now that's just a simple empty file collection. And we can also say my config is going to take that dependency. And then we could say we don't want to um, put all the stuff from my config in there but probably uh, from compile configuration in there but from my config. So that would send, make sense for example if you know that you're going to use the jar in another project where the um, Apache Commons, where, where some dependency, for example, that dependency here, um, is already available on the class path, but some are not. So you only want to put specific ones in there. To compile, you will need to put all these in there. So we will put another one, and let's just call them one and two. But on my config, we only want compile uh, my config two because we know that one is already available and we don't need to put it into the jar so that would be one case in which it would make sense to do something like this um, but right now we're just going to add this dependency here to my config so we can assess it like this my config um, instead of using compile just to show you that this is possible and also what we could do is we could say artifacts and give it my config and the task name so jar so this is going to add the um, the jar file that the jar task with this is actually the task um, produces and put it into my config um, yeah I said the configurations are simple file collections but they're actually file collections of dependencies and artifacts so they're like um, yeah Okay, so I, <laughs> I hope you understood this. Um, we are not going to do this artifact stuff now. Uh, we are just going to add our own configuration called myconfig, put the other dependency in there, and um, assess the myconfig configuration instead of the compile configuration to put the stuff into the jar. So this is going to work as well. and again java jar test and it's working now it put the exact same stuff in there just from the other configuration um, let's change it to compile again though because that's kinda unnecessary in our use case and there we go now to recap um, we added a repository called maven central which uh, was added by default gradle method um, then we added the dependency that is going to be searched in all added repositories to the compile configuration 
slash file collection. Always remember that it's a, config, uh, a collection because the configuration name is kind of misleading. Um, then from this compile configuration, we um, transformed the jar entry into a file collection of its archives, uh, of its contents, to put into our final jar archive. And we then find uh, the contents of the jar dependency as files in our archive. All right, I guess you know what I mean. Um, okay, so this is it for this episode. I think it came pretty long, <laughs> and I was pretty much repeating myself. But um, yeah, that's really important to understand about the configurations and understand that they are not actual configurations, but simply file collections. Um, and uh, how this repositories and um, dependency resolving, resolving stuff works. Those are the, ba the basics of dependency management in Gradle. And once I stop stuttering and talk like, I don't know, weird, um, we can continue with the next tutorial. So see you next time, hopefully. <laughs>